be a failure. As long as not gonna kill you, it's gonna make you what? Stronger. Like this is the best uh, stage of the chart. Any question here from the crowd, from the audience? Yes. Whereabouts do you manufacture your products? Now in Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Yeah. You guys manufacture it in Africa or Rwanda? It's too expensive. And then uh, what happened? Uh, some of the components. So I'll give you an example. So the the, the solar panel we use laminated technology. You can only find that in China and Germany, not in Europe. Uh, so we, you still have to import. And it was too expensive. We tried, we tried Rwanda, we tried Uganda, we tried Dubai, it's just too expensive. And the problem in Africa is also they want volume. If you go in Asia, they're willing to work with small orders, medium sized orders. Here, they don't deal with you unless it's a big one. So there, there was too many challenges. How about assembly if you are manufacturing? So we do the assembly here. Okay. Yeah. And just to answer, that's also a challenge that also the Rwandan government is trying to solve, but we're not there yet. So it costs, it's cheaper for me to bring a, a finished product than it is for me to bring a, a components. And it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Question? No? So amazing. <laughs> anyway, okay, yeah. Uh, actually, just about this topic, could you maybe elaborate a bit on, on the assembly? So, so how does it work here? And so on, this would be interesting. So we outsource also. We work with a team that, uh, so when we have an order, for example, uh, the company with our technician come, we have a manual on the product, so we give them the manual and they assign it. So it takes, uh, takes about 15 to 20 minutes per kilo. It's very, very simple. Uh, stuff. But we outsource. I'm a big fan of outsourcing. Uh, it keeps my uh, OPEX really low and uh, minimizes my risk of uh, closing down. But, uh, yeah, we And what are your what are your revenue streams like? How do you get the cash? That's a good question. So we we uh, we get revenue on digital services. So as I mentioned, we sell we enable airtime, mobile money. So we get a commission out of all these services. Then we we sell also connectivity Wi-Fi. But also on our Wi-Fi system, we sell at one of our biggest revenue right now is data connection on server. So company pay us to, to do survey on our platform. So we'll, just to keep you guys a little bit up, we have an online offline system on our Wi-Fi platform. So people are able to interact with our Wi-Fi system without having data on their phone. So we believe that there's a huge market for offline uh, technology. And lastly, we charge a small fee to our micro franchisee that operate the kiosk, uh, which is about a dollar fifty a month. Thanks. How have you seen the lives of the, the guys you have been working with in the past six years? How uh, has it transformed or are they, do you feel motivated to keep doing what you're doing? See? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I got stories for that too. So. Uh, I mean, um, so now we focus on women and people with disabilities. We used to take anyone and everyone who was interested in working on the kiosk. That was a bad idea. We used to... Uh, have it for free, that was a bad idea. Uh, we used to have young guys, the worst of the, the, the guys between 18 and 25. We have guys, that, you know, what I've learned also when you, when, you, when you do projects like this, when you bring a solution, you also have to have a training program to shift the mindset. That's something I learned doing this project. So we have guys when they start making money, and then they start getting drunk, you know, you had another guy, you had a women issue, he started, he started being a lot of girlfriends, so they start complaining at the kiosk. I, mean, I, I got stories. But uh, now we, women uh, perform much better than men uh, on the kiosk. They're more mature, especially women with kids. So we, we've learned, we only, we only work with people at 25 and above. We have a training program now. We use IoT technology to monitor the kiosk and the agent. So for example, we have motion sensor on the kiosk. 
we know if they're working or not. We have GPS sensor. Uh, so we, every, every problem we've had, we try to look for some, a technology to solve. So it's been a journey. Uh, like, oh, you want to ask a question? Yeah, how expensive is one of your kiosks? The kiosk is not expensive. The development one, but the, the kiosk right now costs us thirteen hundred dollars, one thousand three hundred. Uh, uh, well, what's the distribution rate like in Rwanda? I know, you are, uh, I know you, are, you, you are distributing a lot of the chaos in the rural area. No, we're focusing on rural. We have some, if you guys want to see, Seashka, uh, Sheik, bus stops, uh, another new bus stops we have in Kichukio. But we stop bringing kiosks in. So Kigali is changing laws, making it difficult now to have kiosk business. Uh, they're trying to ban it, actually. Uh, the good thing about us is that kiosk is mobile, so there is no infrastructure to be built. That helped us a lot. Um, but we focus on, like I said, we, we, so we segmented the market, right? Rural area, semi-urban area, we use a kiosk. Urban area, we just use our Wi-Fi system. So, in building area, like, what was the, what was the, the biggest challenge you faced, uh, or what's the, the biggest challenge you're facing now? Uh, was there any time where you felt like, you know what, I'm not doing this stuff anymore. I want to change and do something. Every day, every day, every day I want to stop. <laughs> now I got two, I got two newborn, I mean newborn, man. young kids. Man, you know, you know when you do that and you don't have a lot of responsibility, it's fun and all, but you got kids, you got to, you know, you got to think about the, I mean, I, I love the, the, the hustle. I, I really do, I'm passionate about the hustle. I love solving problems. Uh, but the challenges are many, man. Um, finding talent in software development is a big challenge. Uh, we, we do a lot of embedded systems. I've yet to find, uh, you know, thank God we, we outsource a lot, but still, we need a CTO. We haven't yet to find locally. We're looking at in Kenya and all. Uh, taxes. Tax is a big issue also. You know, one thing that blew my mind, you pay the same level of tax at a big company. So you can't compete. You, the, the, the demand is so high for, for, for engineers, of course the guys don't go with MTN because you know, they have more money to spend. So that, that needs to be uh, reviewed. I think we need to change our tax law when it comes to labor, uh, labor taxes. Um, but the, one of the biggest challenges we have now is expansion. So we, we started in Uganda a year ago. And man, expansion is no joke, man. Um, it's, it's crossing kiosks from the border. We talk about this in East Africa. Yep. It's great on paper, but the reality is totally different. Uh, you still have to pay double taxes. So I pay taxes here. Ten minutes gets there, I got to pay taxes, crossing. In some countries, you deal with corruption. Um, then every country you go, because we're about to start in the coast, but this time we have a partner. But still, expansion, you, you definitely need to to, to think or if you're planning to expand. Again, it's hardware product, so, yep. so it's, it's a, don't, my, my rule now is no more, don't, don't physically expand to another country. Work with a partner. It's, it's hard, it's very difficult to do, yep. but it, 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 will, it will minimize your cost dramatically. Uh, now I understand why costs go so up, because you gotta do the same thing as you're doing in a country of operation. You gotta get a lawyer, an account, and on. And, and you think you got as a, Similar laws, no, man, it's so totally different. You know, so, uh, and then you have to manage that, that team. So now we do, we license the technology. Cool, so, uh, you know, in building, in building your company is super hard. To be honest, like, anytime I see a hardware entrepreneur, I, I take out my heart and say, well, no. So, but uh, for you to be able to have uh, the capacity to, be, to run that kind of company, you need to have a, like a source of energy or where you go to renew your energy. So what keeps you going? What are the things that behind the scenes that you do that keeps you going every day? As a, you know? It depends. I mean, if you're passionate about something, it's, you, you drive yourself, right? Uh, when I'm stressed, I'm down, I'm, I'm pissed off, I go to sleep. I wake up and I'm fresh again and I go back to fight. So, you know, it's, uh, you know, when you do something long enough, you, it, it becomes second nature, right? It, 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 ten years ago, I would have told you, man, uh, I may need counseling, I may need uh, to talk to someone, you know. Now it's, I'm, I'm accustomed to this place. I'm accustomed that it's going to be hard. I already programmed my brain, this is going to be a hard journey. 
you know, I always tell people, entrepreneurship is, is 70% mindset, you know. If your mind is weak, most likely you will not make it. Um, you need to prepare yourself that this is going to be a tough journey. If you prepare yourself, you're already half, half for the day. Because every day you know it's not going to be easy. So when you know it's not going to be easy, you work even hard. But when you know it's easy, you say all, all I have to do is ABC and then I'm going to make money. So that's the problem uh, with the young entrepreneurs. The mindset is, is we need to recalibrate the mindset.